Hi, this is Teresa Alsop from the Sewing Quilting Center, and we're back with Grandma Woggins' quilt, Great Grandma Woggins' quilt. And we have done the blocks. It's taken me a little bit longer to get back, but we are ready to do the border. And what we're gonna do is called um, dead ending. And so I drew this little um, pattern right here. And what happens is it's like you come to the end of the road and you have a dead end. And this is a really easy way to do borders so that you don't have to figure out how to make them fit perfectly. So we're gonna dead end it at this point and then we start from here and dead end the sides and the, the bottom and the other side. Of course, we're only going to do this one and this one, and then we'll flip the quilt and we'll do that a little bit later. So what I've done is I've got some little tools and I'm gonna put this paper underneath so that you can see what I'm working with. You notice I have some tape on my foot. This is the HQ Glide Foot from Handy Culture. And I'm using this Omni Grid glow line tape. You can also use painter's tape or frog's tape, but I like this one because it's really thin and it doesn't get in the way and it's also a little clear so you can see through it. And what I'm using that for is a guide. So I've gone around and on my border on top, I've multi-pointed around it and I want a little area. So I'm gonna put this back under so you can see. There's where my border is and I'm lower. The reason why is because I'm going to put binding on that's going to go back here and I don't want my pretty um, feathers that I'm going to put in here being under my binding. I also am using the edge of my um, foot and you can, I don't know if you can see that right or not but this is the edge of my foot right here and I'm using that to go along the edge of my border to multi-point so that I can get them the feathers again just a little bit higher and not right here but right to the very edge. So I've gone around before and multi-pointed. We're going to go into that to how it works but it takes a long time to multi-point because my border is very uneven and as I said before we're not squaring this out we are doing it just as it is and so as I've come here I'm using this little edge right there on my foot and I go around and I am in pro stitcher in area and I'm hitting multi-point so I can go every few inches and multi-point so that I can get it exactly the way the border is. And so there's our border right there. Okay, so now we're gonna pick our design. We're gonna go into File, Design, and Open. And we're in um, Christy Dalton's um, designs. It's really awesome. Handy Culture has so many designs in there that are you don't need to buy a bunch of designs. They're beautiful designs. Of course, Cindy's gonna want, Christy's gonna want you to go to her site and see what other ones can go with this, but you have almost a thousand designs in the Pro Stitcher. Okay, so this is the one we're gonna pick. So it's all blacked out. We're just gonna hit open, and here is our um, design right there. Okay, so now I'm going to go to repeat. And I'm just going to repeat that horizontally so my green is on the horizontal and I'm just going to go, I have one design, I'm going to have two, and I'm just hitting the little plus button underneath repeat. Three, four, five, six, seven. And we're a little bit shy and so what's really nice is this button right here, it says stretch. It stretches the design to the area. It also de-stretches it. So we're going to stretch it to that area um, horizontally. And if you can see right here, it's just, let's zoom in a little bit so you can see a little better. Those feathers are coming out of my area. So I need to also go into my vertical. And so that turns green and I'm going to st put stretch and it stretches it down into that. Okay, so now I'm going to baseline it and because it is such a wonky kind of design, it's coming out here and it's coming out here. So now I'm going to go to Pro Stitcher because I've based it all as one stitch out and now I'm going to go into um, Skew 
and then hit skew to and that's just gonna change it just a little bit so it's going to fit my irregular border and then we're going to stitch it out so we're gonna come over here and we're not gonna show the whole stitch out but and I'm gonna take these little pieces off as it's stitching out so that I will accidentally catch them in so we're gonna I'm here. We're going to go to Pro Stitcher. We're going to go to Run. It, these are my preset settings. I press Proceed and I always make sure my needle is up. It's up. So I hold my thread, proceed. It's going to move to that point. Needle down. And start to sew. It pauses so I could stitch my thread. So there was a little oopsie here. Let's talk about that. The reason why. I was holding onto my thread a little on the taut side and so it's supposed to needle down needle up do my tacks and stitch out because i was holding that thread so tight it wasn't able to do it and so it did it all in one action so don't hold your thread really tight This particular block or border design has a start point and an end point that are close to the center. So I'm going to cut my threads. The Pro Stitcher pauses for us so that we can cut our threads. And then we're gonna move it to the next design. I can tell where that is because I can see up here, here's my start and my end point represented by the green and the red dot. And I'm going to, it will needle down for me. So I'm going to hit resume. a couple of things um, while we were doing this I forgot to turn on my overhead light um, and I wanted to let you know see that all that quilting that we do did before in the filming is with the lights on the infinity so you have a light here and then you have a double strip back here of lights that are all included into it but there is uh, another light that you can get is the light stand from handy quilter and I'm going to turn it on because it is quite awesome and you can see the difference that it makes with the light so the the infinity lighting is awesome but if you you are in a home like mine that was built in the 70s you don't have a lot of good lighting in the house and so it's nice to have the light stand all right so we're going to start the this other one and I also wanted to mention this looseness here there was a lot of excess looseness on the fabric on this side and with this glide foot it gently just eases that excess material in without pushing it to one end or it just kind of clusters it in just easily. And then we don't have messes and um, tucks. So we're gonna resume it. And 
and we have two more that need to be done. Okay, so that's our last border block. And the different, what's a lot of your border blocks are going to have a start and stop to point in the middle. Um, but it works out really nicely. You just have to cut your threads and move on to your next block. And so let's look at this nice border that we have. You can see that it comes almost to the edge. It just has a little small lip. And then we have enough room up here that we can put our binding on and it's not going to cover our cute little feathers. And so we are now going to advance the quilt and we're going to do all our horizontal lines. Um, borders and sashings as we move down the quilt and then we'll fit do our blocks and then as we when we're finished we will flip it the most important part is is as we advance the quilt you have to baseline here and you have to stitch in the ditch in these blocks and do your blocks otherwise when you flip your quilt you will have a saggy bottom of your border and your Vertical lines now, which will become your horizontal lines when we flip it, will not stitch out well. So base, base, base.